Okay, hi. Let's see if I can illustrate um, a few things to help with steering here. So at the moment we're parked at the side of the road in a lay-by. We can see a dotted white line um, lined up nearly with the orange circular dot that's on the bottom of the windscreen. That's the one I use for lining up with the centre of the road if I'm going to turn right or if I'm parking on the right hand side of the road I line it up with the kerb. The dot in the middle, the orange square, is lined up with the kerb and that's a good reference point in any car. If it's got an orange dot, of course most cars don't, but they do usually have a black lump on the windscreen wiper which you can uh, use to line up with the kerb. The lump is slightly wider than the dot but you can always take a marker pen and mark on your own car's windscreen um, where the kerb should be on a straight road and that will help you avoid crunching your tyres too close into the side of the road where you may have some litter. I can see in front of the car here we've got a, a crushed can which might have some sharp um, edges on it where the metal has torn or you might have glass uh, at the side of the road. It gets brushed there by people driving past or kicked there by people walking along the pavement and the rain may wash it there as well because most roads will slope towards the sides. Now we've also got that green triangle which at the moment is in the middle of the pavement but as I drive on having found my biting point and checked all around there's nobody about so I won't get a signal now I'd line up the green triangle with the kerb and that tells me I've got about a meter away from the side of the road here there is a, a long parking lay-by but the white line has been uh, rubbed out and not repainted for a long time the white broken line is taking the place of the kerb so it lines up pretty much with where the green triangle is I'm going to go round the corner so I've let the kerb disappear into the bottom left corner of the windscreen and then I steer unsteering when I'm about two thirds of the way around the corner so that I've finished taking off all the steering by the time the car is pointing in the direction I want to go and the kerb has then moved out of the corner of the window and back on to where the green triangle is. To get past cars safely and have about a metre space, the edge of the road, as far as I'm concerned, is where the tyres closest to me on this silver car are, so I'm lining those up with the green triangle. And then I check my left mirror and come back towards the left to keep the kerb on the green triangle. If I'm going slowly, I can allow the green triangle and the orange square to be the same distance either side of where the kerb appears to cut through the bottom of the front windscreen. So here we've got a narrow road and you can see that the kerb is floating around between the triangle and the square. So as well as looking well ahead, I'm glancing down at the bottom of my front window to check where my reference points are and I'm moving the steering wheel which you can't see in the recording generally very little maybe one or two minutes worth of steering if you think of the wheel being a clock face with 60 minutes worth of turn on it here the kerbs bending round to the left so I'm adding probably about three four minutes worth of steering to follow the line of the road to keep the edge of the road roughly on that green triangle. Another way of placing the car is to look at the width of my half of the road and imagine myself just sitting two thirds of the way out from the left hand side. You can sometimes see the pattern of where the surface of the road has been spread in two halves here we've got a join down the middle of the road which coincides with the white hazard line, fairly worn away. Here you can see a join down the middle of the road, but it's only in the distance, we're coming up to it now, where you've actually got two different lanes. Nothing's coming from the right, we've got the new gear engaged, so we steer around the corner, straightening up again, two thirds to three quarters of the way around the corner. It will depend on how fast you're moving, and it'll depend on how quickly you move the steering wheel. Only those two things affect whether you're gonna end up, <coughs> pardon me, 
pointing in the direction you want, um, at the position on the road that you want, the distance down the road that you want to have gone. Here I'm coming down to gear two, using a little window just above the driver's door mirror in this car to be able to follow the curb line as I go around the roundabout. Once again, green triangle on the straight curb, and I'm sitting about two thirds of the way out. If I was sitting over here, this would be too far out. This is telling people with my body language, and you can probably see the cars coming towards us, moving towards their gutter, towards their left-hand side of the road. This is implying to people that we want to turn right off this road. Similarly, if I'm traveling this to the left-hand side, this is more of a parking distance. I'm in danger of my tires scraping the left-hand side, and you can probably hear them going up and down drain covers. And that's implying to people that I might be wanting to park on the left-hand side. So on a relatively narrow road like this, there isn't perhaps a lot of difference in the placement of your car, left or right. It might be about 300 millimetres, 30 centimetres, one foot, a third of a metre. What else can I think of for steering? Holding the wheel relatively lightly and looking well ahead, looking in the direction you want to go before you commit to pointing the car in that direction, that's certainly important. And letting the wheel move small amounts and smoothly, with most of the work being done by one hand at any one time, and the other arm just remaining in a position similar to a mirror image of the hand that's doing the work. So here we are in three lanes. I'm about two thirds of the way across from the join between what was the first lane and the second lane. Now I'm about a half to two thirds of the way across in what is a wider lane. I've got some parked cars, so I'm gonna be moving slightly further across car in front signalling left, so I'm dropping my speed. I don't know whether they're turning into a side road. They're not, they're just stopping right before it. Building my speed up. Now I've got my circular orange dot lined up on the white line because I need to have more space from the cars that are parked on the left. Their tyres in the road are lined up with my green triangle. So I'm balancing the risk of somebody walking out from between them or opening their door from one of those parked cars or an animal running out. I'm balancing the risk of that with the risk of getting closer to vehicles that are oncoming at me and passing me on my right hand side. The people in the oncoming cars are all noticing me and wanting to avoid me. So if I misjudge it slightly, they will move themselves away from me. Whereas things on the left-hand side can only get worse. Those stationary cars aren't gonna drive further away from you as you're going past them. When I say they can only get worse, it's because they could open a door or somebody could walk out like the man going past that car, pulling his mirror out so that it performs its function for when he's driving. When he did park the car, he didn't want it getting knocked off by passing traffic that's getting too close that might have misjudged their placement. Here we are at 30 miles an hour and I've got a meter away from these parked cars and I know that because my green triangle is lining up with the wheels I can see. If I was going more slowly, such as I'm going to do here, I could get closer. So the tires of these parked cars are getting closer towards the orange square, but certainly no closer than halfway between the green triangle and the orange square. Otherwise I'm getting down to a, a part distance from the curb, and that's the distance at which my door mirror on the passenger side might even be over the top of the curb. And that's bad news if I'm going past a car that's got something sticking out on the side, namely that car's own door mirror. Okay, that's probably it for positioning. So at this mini roundabout, I will just 
probably make my way through the roundabout. Blue car on the right stops, checking for anybody coming through fast on the left. Nobody is. Check the mirrors, don't need to give a signal. Um, I'll just leave it running for this final bend. Here we are, traveling at 20. Green triangle lining up. Now I'm coming to a piece of road where I can't see so far ahead, so I do want to tuck in closer. And indeed at this junction, I want to keep my car fully on my, my side. So halfway between those two colored marks, which coincides on this car with a little black hemisphere that sticks up from the dashboard. I'll try and point it out. I haven't got a pen that's long enough. Let me see if my pointing tool is accessible. Yes, it is. Let me see if I can get it ready to point. May not be very visible visible on the recording so i'll point it out with a stick so green triangle orange square little black thing in the middle which is halfway between the two and that's it